Hey guys, my name is Amy and today I wanted to talk about Peperomia care tips. My last video that I posted was my entire Peperomia collection, so if you're interested in watching that, I will link it. Firstly, I'm sorry if you can hear my dog scratching at the rug, but it's distracting her from barking at the workman outside, so that's the better alternative. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Um, based on my comments on my last video and other comments I've seen on other people's YouTube videos, I think the main issue that people run into with Peperomia is watering. Um, specifically overwatering, a lot of people were saying that they struggle with theirs rotting. The vast majority of peperomia on the market are quite succulent. There are a few harder to come by ones that are more terrarium, really high humidity loving varieties, but the most that you'll find in garden centres are the more succulent varieties. The easiest way that I find to figure out whether my peperomias are thirsty or not is through visual or tangible cues. So one thing I look at with some of these larger leafed, more succulent varieties is how thick the leaves are. If they're really firm and don't really move when you try and sort of fold the leaves inwards, then they're fine, they don't need a water. But I'll show you with this Peperomia polybotria, you can see the leaves are really thin. They bend in half. If this plant wasn't thirsty, I would end up snapping the leaves by doing this. I think this is called the taco test and I'm pretty sure that was coined by Philly foliage, um, Nick from Philly foliage, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, where you fold them in like this and if you can fold them in half, they're thirsty. If you can't, then they're not. This works really well on lots of varieties. So the Peperomia obtusifolia, if you can see I'm adding pressure, nothing's happening, it's not budging. If I tried to fold it in half, I would snap the leaf. Um, so this one isn't thirsty. And the Peperomia orba pixie lime, this one's probably due a drink soon. The, this does have slightly thinner leaves than um, than the Polybotria or the Obtusifolia, but there's still some like resistance in it. If I really, if I squeezed any more than that, it would snap down the middle. So this one is fine. But I'll include the picture of when I first bought this because it was really, really dehydrated. It was so wrinkly, really wilty, and um, it bounced back from that absolutely fine. So my first bit of advice would be if you're unsure to just leave it a little bit longer. They can handle it if they get really, really dehydrated. They maybe don't want to get to that drastic point all the time, but while you're just getting to know your plant, it's a lot easier for them to bounce back from underwatering than it is overwatering. And something like the Peperomia dolibriformis as well has these little tiny succulent leaves that when they're fully saturated, don't need water. They're really plump, really firm. Whereas at the moment, I don't think it's, you know, you can't really tell on camera, but you'll start to feel them feeling a bit thinner. And that is when I would choose to water it. Peperomia have incredibly delicate root systems, which is why I think they're so prone to rotting. But I always find if in doubt, just leave it a little bit longer, keep an eye on it, really feel and see if those leaves are starting to feel very thin and flimsy. Something like the Peperomia caparatus or the ripple Peperomia, you can also gauge from the leaves. They, there's like a noticeable difference in how thin they feel when they're thirsty versus when they've been watered, but it's a little bit less obvious than something like the Polybotria. So on this, you can see just, especially on this side, they're starting to wilt a bit. So I know that this is gonna be due to water in the next few days when they start to wilt down a bit more. And then the other thing, is getting to know the the weight of your pot. If it feels really, really light and has all those other signs, then you know you're good to water. If it still has some weight to it, then again, leave it for a little bit longer. My other tip would be to bottom water these if you've also struggled with um, root rot. So where you just fill a bowl with like a bit of water, pop it in and wait for the roots to absorb the water from the bottom and then take it out, let it drain. I usually let them drain on like a tea towel or something and then you can pop them back in their pots. Another tip I have is to buy your peperomia small in pots around this size and that is because I find, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is a UK thing or just where I'm buying my plants but larger peperomia, it's like my Lillian and my um watermelon peperomia, which you can see in my previous video, they always come with some kind of plug, whether that's a mesh plug or like a really dense soil plug, or even my large Clusia folia came with like a sponge plug um, right at the base of the plant, which I find holds a lot more moisture than the rest of the soil. So you can 
start eat, they'll even start to show signs of needing a drink and the soil around you know the side will feel dry everything will look like it needs a water but that plug right in the center is retaining moisture still so then when you water it everything else starts to absorb the water but that everything inside the plug is already moist it doesn't want any more water and that's where i found rotting happens so my first advice would be to buy them small because these little ones don't seem to come with any plugs they're already tiny i've just tipped the soil everywhere now i will say the the soil quality that comes with these is pretty terrible it's hydrophobic so the only way to water them is through bottom watering but i've just found that but i've not had any problems with over over watering with these smaller potted peperomias Whereas these larger ones, I always find that I end up having to repot them, which I think I'm going against the grain because I think the typical advice is to not repot your peperomia unless you have to. But this leads into repotting and what soil to use and what pots to use. Um, if you buy a larger peperomia, I would give it a couple of days to acclimate into your home, maybe a week. And then even if you just take it out of, the, out of its pot and try and investigate and see if you can find some kind of plug near the, the very centre base of the plant um, because then I would advise that you repot. I did this with my Peperomia lilian, my larger Clusia folia, my watermelon Peperomia, um, my larger Polybotria because otherwise I find that that plug in the in the centre of the soil is just a bit of a death sentence for Peperomia because I've heard a lot of people have really struggled with their peperomia once they've repot them. I, my first advice would be don't unless you have to, which then leads into why I suggest buying smaller peperomia so that you don't have to repot them. But if you have got a larger one or you find a larger one that you really, really like, I would recommend seeing if it has those plugs. And if it does, really gently trying to repot it and waiting until the soil is as dry as possible before you do this. But I don't want to. I don't want to give anyone any advice that's going to kill their peperomia because I don't think that's the the standard advice. But yeah, these these larger ones, I've always found they come with them. Same with like African violets as well. If you watched my um, plant chores video that I posted quite a while ago, now I had to repot a African violet because it had this one of those mesh plugs, or it was like a, a really dense soil plug. But yeah, I feel like I'm talking in circles. If you want to avoid that, buy them really small and they will come with that really solid hydrophobic soil but it dries out quick enough you just need to bottom water it and I've not had any issues of that and if you do have a larger one I would repot it if it has that mesh mesh plug but also just take lots of cuttings um peperomia is so easy to propagate which I'll go into in a minute but take lots of cuttings before you do that just in case. I also sometimes find the cuttings do better than the mother plants and I don't know if that's because they go their whole life in your care versus trying to adjust to your care. I don't know. So I'll talk a bit about um, repotting and soil now. I've always found again this peperomia came in a, a pot that was maybe a couple of inches bigger. I tend to find that if I'm repotting a peperomia it's either going into the same size pot it was in or it's going into a smaller pot because peperomia do like to be root bound in nature they're typically in really small sort of craggy areas they don't like a lot of room around their roots so for all of my large peperomia that i've repotted they've ended up in smaller planters another thing is to always make sure that you're potting them in something with a drainage hole whether that's a plastic nursery pot that you can then plant into a nice cover pot or a terracotta pot or sometimes you can get really nice ceramic pots that have drainage holes already um but yeah they do not want to be sitting in water you have to take them out water them and let them fully drain before you put them back in their pots or on their saucers and when you go to repot your peperomia you want to make a really nice chunky well draining aerated soil mixture i get most of my soil and soil additives from soil ninja so i'll use a bit of um, cocoa coir and then I'll add lots of orchid bark and perlite. Um, pumice is great as well if you have that and I then add some worm castings as well. I'm just patting well. myself off because I went on a bit of a weird tangent trying to explain what kind of soil mixture you'd need and I figured it'd be better to, to just show you. Um, so you can see here this is a really really 
chunky aerated mix with lots of perlite, lots of orchid bark, and then cocoa core and worm castings. So this is the kind of consistency I'd be looking for for peperomia. And I'm just gonna put up this little piece into this pot. I think ideally I'd use a plastic pot, but I don't have any small plastic nursery pots left at the moment. So I'll get this potted up now. So just add a little bit at the bottom. So you want the roots to be submerged in soil and then that little piece of new growth can stick out the top. And then I just like to really gently, especially gently with these little cuttings, um, with these little propagations, gently pat the soil down and then give it a little tap. And yeah, then I'll get this watered in. There we go. That little baby leaf will continue to grow. It'll put out lots more and we'll have a whole new little watermelon peperomia plant. And the other thing is to, if you can, unless it's sort of dire, um, wait until your peperomia are fully dry before you repot them. And once you have repotted them, just water them in and yeah, they'll be all good. The next thing I want to talk about is lighting. Most peperomia like bright indirect light. Um, now I'm not very good with um, sort of window directions like north window east window i tend to think of it as where the morning light comes in and where the afternoon light comes in but i know i'm very i'm very lucky we live in a flat that is a bit of a sun trap we get sun all day coming all the way around so the vast majority i would say not to put them directly in a really sunny windowsill you'll notice um burning of the leaves i think i've got that on yeah you can see there that browning on that peperomia lilian leaf, some burning you might notice, or even bleaching where they start to look a bit pale and anemic. Um, that can be from getting too much sun or like, sorry if you can hear my stomach, or some burning on the leaves you might notice as well. But there are some varieties that are very happy in really bright light. Um, my peperomia incarna sits really close to a very very sunny window as does my um dollar performance that's a very succulent type of peperomia and then these thinner leaved sort of ripple peperomias i would say just want to be pulled a few feet away from a window so getting um bright indirect light i'm not very good at describing light and bright indirect and direct and all of that i i think because where i live does get so much sun i'm just very lucky um it's not very fun for us in the summer but the plants love it. Um, so my, yeah, my dollar performance sits right in a very, very sunny window and my Lillian sits a few feet away from that same window and they both seem to be doing well. This one's blooming and it's really cute. I, I sometimes cut the blooms off, but I'm going to leave this one on and just see what it does. If your peperomia aren't getting enough light, you may notice stunted growth where it's growing really slowly, although peperomia are a little bit slower growing than, than some other plant varieties, or you may notice the growth is coming through a lot smaller, or if you have a variegated plant, the variegation might start to revert back to green, but they certainly don't want to be in a low light situation. I'll very quickly touch on humidity as well. Um, I think when you look online, the advice is that they like quite high humidity. I'd say they're fine without, there's no extra humidifiers going in my flat. Um, I haven't noticed that they, struggle without any extra humidity. There will be some varieties that are more terrarium style, but that's not the typical ones that you'll find in garden centres. For the most part, they'll be fine in standard home conditions. And the other thing I guess would be heat um, or temperature rather. I, I think in the winter, once, it's, once the windows start to get a bit cold and drafty, I'll pull any that are really close to the window a bit further back. Um, because I think if they were to get really, really cold, that would lead to sort of a bit of rotting as well. Um, so that's something to bear in mind with the colder season, at least in the UK is, is coming up, that if you've got any that are really close to a window that you do notice starts to get very cold at night, just pull them a little bit further back just to prevent them from getting too cold. And any that you do have further back in your home that are further away from windows, they may need to come slightly closer just because there'll be less light during the day. I'll talk a bit about propagation now. I love propagating peperomia because it's really, really easy. You can do them via stem cutting, leaf cuttings, you can propagate half a leaf. Um, I've got some with me, I'll take a few cuttings to show you how I tend to do it. So 
So to start, I've got my shears and some rubbing alcohol. I tend to just put a little bit on a cloth and then rub it along the blades of my shears. And you want to do this every time you go to a different plant because you don't want to risk um, spreading bacteria or anything from plant to plant. So the first one that I'm going to show you how I tend to propagate is my string of turtles. You can see here there's a really bare stem with lots of sort of free nodes. So I'll just take a cutting that's going to fall down. So there you go, as you can see, there's loads and loads of bare stem where leaves have fallen off. And then we've got some nice new growth at the top there. So what you can do is water propagate them. I've done that before. Just get a little jar like this, pop them in, change the water out every week or so. Keep an eye on the water level and eventually it will start to grow roots and then you can plant it. Um, but what I like to do is just pop stuff in a perlite prop box and I'll add some extra like footage and um, pictures to show you what I like to do. You just need a sort of just standard plastic tub really with a lid and then you can fill it with damp perlite. You don't want it to be like really sloshed about with loads of water. I, I just like to keep it kind of damp. You can just throw your cuttings on top if you want to. You can submerge them a little bit in the perlite, but I'll show you what I'll do because that's what I'm going to do with this one. Um, yeah, and that will grow roots. And then once it's sort of more established, you can add it back into your mother plant or start a whole new plant if you like. So if you take a stem that does still have lots of leaves growing along and you want to free up those nodes and chop off some of those leaves, just pop them in a prop box or something or into the soil of your mother plant and see what they do because the vast majority of peperomia do leaf propagate but I've never done it with this type in particular I tend to just wait till there's a bit of a bare stem and then that's what I'll do. So another one I'm going to take a couple of cuttings from is my um, peperomia orba pixie lime. As you can see here we've got this sort of split damaged leaf <clears throat> which is another great thing about peperomia if you've got a damaged leaf chop it off and try and propagate it because you can have really really I'll show you here really really damaged leaves and they'll do fine these are all ones that I rooted in a prop box and they've got um a good root system now some of them you can you see maybe are starting to put out little baby leaves and I've just popped them in soil mostly to free up some room in my prop box um but yeah a lot of those leaves are really really damaged it's always worth trying because they are so easy to propagate but here I've got yeah this damaged leaf right here this probably isn't the best way and I'm going to chop just along there. <clears throat> yeah, this probably isn't the best way to show you what I'm doing. I need to clear a table, really, um, where I can set my camera up and everything is in front of me and <laughs> easy to see. So yeah, that's what it looks like once I've taken the cutting. And again, you could pop it in some water or what I'll do, which is pop it in a prop box and roots will grow from the bottom of the plant where you've cut it and then eventually you'll get little babies growing as well. I like to dip the ends in rooting powder or rooting hormone. I don't know that it's completely necessary, but if you have it. And something like the Peperomia polybotria or the watermelon Peperomia, you could take a leaf cutting, so chop sort of there, and then you can like cut the leaf in half. And I've got some like this in my prop box. I won't do it again with this plant. I've got enough <laughs> cuttings of this going, but you could then cut the leaf in half and you'll have two pieces that you can root. You can submerge sort of where the um, petiole meets the leaf from the uh, the top half would that be the top half of the leaf and then the bottom half just tip it upside down so that the side that you've cut is what's in your prop box so that's really cool you can take one leaf cutting and make multiple propagations from it here is a little um peperomia polybotria propagation that I've got going and once this um once these little baby leaves start to grow I actually cut them free from the mother leaf and pop that straight back in my prop box and it's now re-rooting again so you can also do that you can continue to remove the babies and keep seeing if that same leaf will keep producing new growth so that's yeah tiny little peperomia polybotrias I've also got some what is this peperomia frost that came from leaf propagations? I think the mother leaf has died off now. Here's a good one. <clears throat> this is a peperomia babella, I think. And you can see it's got some tiny babies. Hopefully you can see growing out the soil. And as the leaves, as the baby leaves get bigger, eventually the mother leaf will just sort of 
die off and you'll just be able to pull it straight out of the soil if it's um got a bit of resistance just leave it alone eventually it will just come straight out but that's really cute i'm really excited that that one has rooted and has grown new babies so yeah the vast majority are very easy to stem propagate leaf propagate i don't know about something like the dollar performance i might I don't want to do it today. I, I, I think because I can't see where I'd want to take a leaf from, but I, I think I will try at some point whether you can leaf propagate from something like this. I find that you probably can because, yeah, so many of them you can propagate that way. And eventually you'll have a little diddy plant. This is a Peperomia rosso. And yeah, this was a, a leaf cutting as well. The mother leaf has died off, and now we've just got this little. Diddy plant, which is doing really well. It's really cute. So I thought I would show you my prop box. It sits just by our back door. Um, one thing I think I forgot to mention, you have to have a clear tub if you're looking to make one of these yourself. And on the top, I've got some potted up Peperomia propagations. So those are some of the Auber leaves that are rooted. No babies yet, but they are fully rooted. I've got some watermelon and polybotria leaves with some babies just start to show through. There's the Peperomia berbella, some more watermelons, and there are some Peperomia lilian props that are doing really well. And um, now I'll show you what is going on inside the prop box. So here is everything I have propagating in here at the moment. I've got, there we go, there's a piece of watermelon Peperomia that has got a little baby going through. I think this might be ready to pot up, so I might do that in a second. We've got some Peperomia rotundifolia, just starting to root, and lots of rotundifolia leaves as well, so they will also root and start to put off little babies. Try and find one. It's got some roots, there you go, you can see just there takes a little bit longer for those to acclimate than it does um, when you take a stem cutting but they will eventually put out new growth and then I've got a little piece of peperomia what is this peperomia scandens oops just there there's some tiny tiny new growth loads of the watermelon peperomia Got some Peperomia Lillian. There you go. It started to rot a bit at the base, so I don't know if that will continue. Um, but so far it seems okay and it is rooted. So I'll just try and submerge the um, the cut part of the plant that is where roots would form in the perlite, or you can just lay them on top. Here is the cutting I took in the video. So all I've done is submerge that in the perlite. And then here is the string of turtles. I tend to just lay those down on the perlite and roots will find their way into it. Here is the half Peperomia polybotria leaf that I mentioned in my video. So you can see it's putting out roots. I, th I think this is the one that had already put out lots of little uh, pups and I removed them and now it's rerouting and hopefully we'll at some point put out some even more new baby growth. What's that there? That's a piece of uh, Clusia folia. It's not rooting yet or is it just starting to? I think it is literally just starting to. You can see that little piece just there. It's quite a small leaf so I don't know how well it will do but hopefully. But that is some of the peperomia leaves I have propagating and I will pop this one up for you later in the video I think. I think the last thing I want to talk about is pests. I'll, I've got some notes in front of me I'll check I haven't missed any of the points I wanted to make um, but yeah pests I weirdly thrips seem to love my peperomia which you wouldn't think is the kind of plant that, that thrips would go for they tend to love the sort of thinner thinner plants thinner leaf plants like calathea or philodendron but Definitely lately I'm going, I've got my watermelon peperomia, one of my peperomia cruciifolias, my goldfish plant, which I'm really sad about, <laughs> um, have all got thrips. Um, it's not too hard to deal with. I, I tend to just keep them isolated from all my other plants um, on my coffee table where I can check them sort of 
any evening when I'm sitting down watching TV, I can just look at the plant. If I see a thrip, I'll just squish it. And that tends to be how I deal with it. I do want to try the, um, what are they called? Like beneficial insects at some point, the thrip, the mites that, that eat the thrips. I've never tried them before, but at some point I think I will. If I have it at the moment, the outbreak I'm having, I'm pretty much on top of, but if I get another bad outbreak, I might try those. Not that I want to get another outbreak of thrips. Um, but that seems to be the main thing that I I struggle with with them. Um, if I do get thrips on a plant, especially peperomia, like you can see with this plant, it's so dense in the middle, it would just be a nightmare. So what I would advise doing is removing a lot of the leaves, thinning the plant out a bit so you have more room to see what's going on and be able to investigate. You can try and propagate those leaves as well, keep them, again, far away from anything else and just check them. Um, check those leaves for thrips but they might not always make it because they're already under stress from the pest <laughs> but yeah thin out your plant if you do find thrips on them any plant it just makes it easier if there's less foliage to deal with and I think the other thing I don't have too much trouble with mealybugs um but I think mealybugs would love peperomia because they're so succulent however root mealybugs I have had some trouble with and when I get root mealybugs what I tend to do is just chop the base of the plant throw everything in the soil and, and below away and reroot the top cutting. But my main advice would be if you struggled with pepperomia in the past, buy them small and to just bottom water them when you start to notice those visual or tangible cues of them being thirsty. Some really good beginner ones are the pepperomia obtusifolia, the pepperomia polybotria, the pepperomia hope, which I don't have on this table right now, something like the dolibriformis or the ferrier, which is the happy bean. That's a very similar similar type of peperomia to this one but the leaves are a bit longer those are the varieties that i'd say have really really easy cues to pick up on for when they're thirsty where you'll be able to tell like this is really really rigid but when this is thirsty these get really really thin same with the polybotria the peperomia hope gets wrinkly i've noticed when that needs a drink um some of the more tricky ones i'd say are these caparatas the ripple peperomia this one's doing all right so far. I'm really happy with how that's come along, but I think because they're just slightly less obvious when they need a water, they're maybe going to be more prone to, to rotting. The Peperomia Orba as well is one that um, when I got this plant years and years ago and its stem rotted on me and was gone within a matter of days, I think this one is possibly quite prone to rotting. So this is definitely one that I would bottom water if you have it. I don't know if that's because it's got very, very lightly fuzzy um, stems and leaves I, and a lot of fuzzy plants don't like to get water on them. So yeah, definitely something to bear in mind if you get this plant, definitely bottom water it and be really cautious of whether it's actually really thirsty. The watermelon pepper in here as well, I've heard is quite um, temperamental. Mine seems to be doing okay for now, but I've not had it for very long. And I've got lots of cuttings as well. That'd be my other main tip is to, once you've brought your peperomia home, just take lots of cuttings and um, experiment with how you want to propagate them. You can do it in soil, but I find that a bit harder to monitor when you propagate in soil. So I definitely really like water when you can see the, the roots developing or a perlite prop box. And I'm sure a sphagnum moss prop box would work really well too. So yeah, definitely take lots of cuttings. And it like, Peperomia, they're so brittle, I find most of them come with these really damaged leaves in the garden centres anyway, so I just chopped all of them off my watermelon, Peperomia, and they've all rooted really well. I think that is everything. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it wasn't too rambly. Um, hopefully I made sense. If there's anything that you want further clarification on, um, feel free to leave me a comment, I will respond to it. And if you have any tips of your own, please leave those in the comments. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm Amy's Greenish Thumb on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you next time. Bye!